Vivian Lee was lauded for her beauty, but she often feared her physical attributes prevented her from being taken seriously in the acting community. And although she was well known for sleeping around and being able to bed just about anyone she set her sights on, Lee is often associated with her second husband, Laurence Olivier, to whom she was wed from 1940 to 1960. Lee also had a bad reputation for being hard to work with. Throughout most of her adult life, she suffered from bipolar disorder, which often resulted in her acting somewhat erratically when she was in a manic state. Arguably, this could have contributed to some of her sexual promiscuity as well. Either way, it's hard to pin down just how many partners she had throughout her life. Join Facts First as we take a closer look at how Vivian Lee was incapable of finding satisfaction in her love life and how this led to her sleeping with just about anyone in an attempt to scratch that itch. Vivian Lee, the Nymphomaniac One of the primary reasons why Gone with the Wind resonated so much with critics and audiences was the fact that the film's leads were perfect for their respective roles. The producer, David Oselznick, considered dozens if not hundreds of women for the role of Scarlett O'Hara, before finally settling on the virtually unknown Brit, Vivian Lee. Teaming up with her ever-so-handsome leading male co-stars, Clark Gable and Leslie Howard, and the lovely Olivia de Havilland, Lee and company managed to achieve a level of celebrity that few, if any, stars had managed to find until that point. While their lives and careers may have seemed like something out of a fairy tale, off-screen their personal stories were anything but perfect. Scandals and dark secrets plagued the stars of Gone with the Wind, and Lee, in particular, seemed to be plagued with an extra dose of controversy. In 1932, while she was working as an up-and-coming actress in England, Vivian married a barrister named Herbert Lee Holman. The man was 13 years her senior when she walked down the aisle with him at 19. A year later, Lee gave birth to a daughter named Suzanne. Married life wasn't something Vivian really enjoyed at the time. She was a rising star and just figuring out what she wanted to do with her life. So, in 1936, she started having an affair with fellow married actor Laurence Olivier. Their romance got a start when Lee attended one of Olivier's stage performances. Afterwards, she went backstage and visited him in his dressing room to confess her adoration. She immediately started flirting with Olivier and ended up planting a kiss on his neck as he quickly escaped the room to avoid her advances. But try as he might, Olivier wasn't able to resist her youthful beauty. And just like that, a passionate and scandalous love affair had begun. Lee was married to her first husband, and her affair with Olivier was still going strong when David O. Selznick offered her the much sought after role of Scarlett O'Hara. She promptly accepted, and Olivier would often show up on set to visit her. Of all the cast members of Gone with the Wind, Lee had to bear the biggest responsibility. She had to spend 120 days filming while her co star, Clark Gable, was only needed for a little more than 70. Frequently, she'd spend 18 plus hours on set and whenever she'd have the rare weekend off, she and her lover, Laurence Olivier, would enjoy their time together secluded away in hotel rooms. They would never leave their room and live entirely off of room service while making love before Lee had to return to the Gone with the Wind set. In 1940, both Lee and Olivier divorced their respective spouses. Later that summer, they got married. Even though they clearly had a strong connection at first, Olivier wasn't able to keep his wife happy and satisfied. Soon, she was seeing other men behind his back. Lawrence later admitted that satisfying her had become a burden. Lee would continue to attempt to satisfy her sexual desires by sleeping with countless other lovers, including the renowned actor Peter Finch, who was a close friend of Lawrence Olivier. Many experts believe Vivian Lee was bipolar. She continued her promiscuous ways until her death in 1967. Her list of lovers was just about as long as her equally insatiable Gone with the Wind co-star, Clark Gable. After her death, Peter Finch said that sex with Lee was a lot like a drug, a stimulant as strong and addictive as anything else. He also referred to her inability to find satisfaction as a sickness. Vivian also frequently saw English actor John Buckmaster. They spent hours together while he taught her yoga, but rumor has it his teaching methods got very hands-on. Lee's Nervous Breakdown In 1953, Lee and Peter Finch traveled to Ceylon, Sri Lanka to film Elephant Walk. Not long after filming wrapped, Lee experienced a nervous breakdown, and Paramount, the production company making the film, had her replaced with Elizabeth Taylor. Olivier sent for Lee and had her come back home to Britain. While there, in between moments of being totally incoherent, 
Lee admitted to Olivier that she was in love with Finch and had been engaging in an affair with him for quite some time. Over the next few months, Lee slowly managed to recover from her breakdown, but Olivier's friends had learned of Lee's troubles. Actor David Niven described Lee as having been, quote, quite mad, while another one of Olivier's friends, Noel Coward, noted that things had been going from bad to worse with Lee since 1948, the year she started her relationship with Finch. Even though Lee recovered from her breakdown, her overall mental health continued to decline until her death. As her mental illness progressed, her relationship with Finch steadily deteriorated. In 1953, Lee had recovered enough from her breakdown to perform alongside Olivier in a production of The Sleeping Prince. Two years later, they performed together for a season at Stratford-upon-Avon, in which they had roles in Shakespeare plays like Macbeth, Titus Andronicus, and Twelfth Night. For the next several years, Lee continued working, focusing primarily on stage performances while remaining married to Olivier, although their relationship at this point was anything but romantic. In 1956, Lee suffered a miscarriage and entered into a months-long bout of depression. In 1958, she began dating actor Jack Merivale, who was aware of her struggles, but assured Lawrence he would take good care of her. Two years later, Lee and Olivier officially divorced. Olivier quickly married actress Joan Plowright. As he said he would, Merivale took care of Lee and proved a stabilizing force in her life. But it's suspected that Lee was seeing other men behind his back as well. Vivian Lee's Death Throughout her life, Vivian Lee had recurring bouts of tuberculosis. In 1967, while rehearsing for a performance in Edward Albee's A Delicate Balance, she experienced a rather severe resurfacing of the disease. For the next several weeks, she rested and appeared to recover. On the evening of July 7, 1967, however, Mary Vale left her at their apartment to perform a play. When he returned home, he discovered her body lying on the floor. It appeared as if she had been trying to walk to the bathroom when she collapsed and suffocated from the fluid that had filled her lungs. Mary Vale contacted Lee's family and got a hold of Olivier, who was receiving cancer treatment at a nearby hospital. Lawrence was overcome with grief as he immediately beelined to Lee's apartment to find that Mary Vale had moved Lee's body to the bed. Before her body could be removed, Olivier stayed with Mary Vale by the now departed Lee's side. Lee received a Catholic funeral at St. Mary's Church in London. She was then cremated and her ashes were scattered on a lake at her summer home in Blackboys, East Sussex, England. Now it's time to hear from you. What surprised you most about these revelations about Lee? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.